Hi there, my name is Alastair Kennedy and I'm the Sociable Social Worker and I give practical advice to social workers and those wanting to foster and adopt. And in this video we're going to look at the certain types of behaviours that children might come to your family home with when they're being fostered. Now, these behaviours are things that I have experienced when I was a supervising social worker for 15 years and how we manage these behaviours. Just a word of warning, some of this is can be quite distressing, so if you're easily upset, I'm going to give some real examples from certain caseloads, so um, if you're easily upset, then maybe you should go and look at a different video, okay? But um, if you're still here, then let's get on with it. So the next point is not about a behavioural point so much as more about bad toiling, toil, toil, I can't say this word, toileting, bad toileting technique. And this is probably more for toddlers and kind of younger children. So a lot of the time we work with children as social workers and if you're in interpretation, where a lot of children haven't been toileted properly and they might have never ever been um, used nappies a lot of the time, sometimes they may, may never have been a, a potty trained. So the key thing for you is to rectify that and rectify that quickly. And your supervising social worker will give you ideas on how to manage that if it's a younger a younger child or it's even into toddler stages as well. But uh, I had a child once and we couldn't figure out we knew they were going to the toilet, but we couldn't figure out because they never seemed to go to the toilet, the actual physical toilet. So, and then there was this ever pervasive smell throughout the house and we could not find out where this um, smell was coming from. And then we found out one day, we kind of narrowed the smell down, that actually there was an umbrella stand and the child had actually been pooing in the umbrella stand. Now, there is another thing about that, which I always say to foster carers, when children come to your house, make sure that they know where the toilet is. Because a lot of times, children will defecate or urinate in a bedroom because they're really scared to go to the toilet at night. Because one, they might not know where it is, and two, they don't know the rules around the toilet. So make sure you tell them where the toilet is and that it's safe and there's a night light and all that kind of stuff. A lot of the children that you'll care for will have some sort of anxiety issues. and that may be expressed as anger. Now, what I would say to you is they're anxious, they'll be anxious all the time because no wonder they've been taken away from their family, their friends and their environment. And you'd be anxious too, wouldn't you? Now, what I always say to foster carers is the first thought is you don't need CAMS input. They just need you. They need you to soothe them, to work through the, the, the anxiety, anxiety calmly and also about working with your supervising social worker to look at the triggers of that anxiety. And some of it may it manifest itself in strange ways. I had a child once who, and, it, and we f eventually figured out why he did this behavior, but he all used to bite the windowsill of his bedroom and he actually chewed the windowsill to quite a great degree. And it was always before contact or around contact and that was the issue so we worked on that and that anxiety and his anxiety levels before contact and it's just those little things that you need to watch out for so although this isn't a behavior one of the things i would ask you to look at particularly needs looking at within preparation groups as well for fostering is about how you're going to manage children and animals because it's a really important one and one that um, lots of foster carers talk about and are really worried about now, if you do have animals, then I suggest you make sure in the matching process that that is really clearly discussed and what the risks are to animals. I have had numerous times with foster carers over the years with children who have come into placement and been quite settled, but then over a time you get clingy behaviour with animals, you get foster carers that had to take their animals into the toilet and actually kind of have a shower and the animal was in the toilet with them because the child was so clingy. Um, it's very rare to have a, the abuse of animals as a lot of people would say, well, children might abuse animals. That's pretty rare. I think the most thing you'll probably get is clingy behavior and that kind of following and, and following animals around, but you can also that kind of smothering as well. So what I would say is just make sure that you understand during the matching process what the behavior of children is towards animals. So I just talked about it there about animals and clingy behavior. And I think most of the children that you'll 
probably meet in your career as a foster carer will have some sort of attachment issue and that could mean they're clingy or they're not so clingy but the most I've felt with working with foster carers is that most children um, are very very clingy and that comes down to some of the issues that they've had in, in childhood and you may leave a room and they may shout for you or they may stand in the hallway and shout for you where are you where are you where are you going what are you doing all the time and that is something that you need to to read up on because it's based on adoption uh, sorry it's based on attachment theory so go read up on it and then you'll have a clearer understanding of it and it'll all make sense why children do that so another thing that we experience as supervising social workers and as foster carers is children who hoard food. If you can imagine, a lot of the children that we work with have not really experienced um, consistent food preparation, consistent food buying through their childhood. And so a lot of the times they may hoard food. And I had a child once who actually hoarded so much food within the base of his bed that it was rotten and we couldn't figure out where the smell was coming from and that was because he just didn't know where where his next meal was coming from with his birth family and he was worried about it in the fostering setting. So what we did is we set up and we kind of demystified the whole shopping experience because they'd never been shopping before and, and because they've experienced sporadic, sporadic shopping or they've been given money for the chip shop, that's something that I would encourage people to do um, is to demystify the whole shopping process and take them with you and see and get them to pick out some favourites um, as well. And that leads me on to the next point, which is a lot of the children that you meet will not eat. A lot of the children may overeat. And I mean, obviously you can't put children on diets um, unless it's medically necessary and it's within their care plan. And But I've had a lot of uh, foster carers over the years who unfortunately have labelled um, cupboards, you know, the foster childs and then their own children. All the children must be treated equal. Yes, you can have some favourite foods. Yes, you can manage diets, but everybody eats together, everybody eats the same thing and there's no ever, ever singling out of foster children. Breaking items. Now, a lot of kids are clumsy anyway. They're kids, they're running about daft and breaking things it's like that in lockdown at the moment. But a lot of the kids we will work with have real no indication of what things are worth. And I interviewed, I did a Form F assessment on someone who wanted to be a foster carer and they had these big glass cabinets, they were massive these things and they just looked like death traps waiting to happen if they had younger children. But they had lots of little glass um, like animals and things in them and I thought oh, I, need to, I do need to say to them that they really need to do something with them or, or they can't have them but they went on and on about keeping them and so uh, eventually the manager said to me look just capitulate let them have it we can deal it with them when they're approved I wasn't too keen on it so what happened kids placed in placement and what's the first thing the kids do go into the cupboard and break everything smash everything goes smash everywhere and then the the carers were all up in arms oh we want to end the placement we want to end the placement and I said well you know if you're taking my advice in the first place the job would have been done simple stealing now, trust needs to be built between your foster child and and you as a family, and you always need to find out if anything's went missing, if it's your children or it is actually the looked after child that, that's stolen anything. But stealing usually is precipitated by something that's going on. It's either bullying, somebody wants money off the child, or they're worried about their siblings and need to give their siblings some money. Are they hungry? Who knows? I think the key to that is not to chastise them. And just to listen. So there you have it, some uh, behaviours that you might expect for children coming to your um, family home when you're fostering. Look, I had loads more on the list that I never did because the, the video was long enough. If you'd like another video on some of the behaviours that you would like to expect in, drop me a comment in the comments box. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want further notifications, ring the little bell, ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling, or subscribe, which would be great. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon.